Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Howard Huang from Huawei, and another co-speaker is uh, Sarah Zhao from UMC, but unfortunately, uh, he could not uh, make this trip to Austin. So, uh, so actually, uh, the reason why there's a part two in the title is that I had this session uh, back in Tokyo, actually, uh, also in V. Brownback. At the time, I think I gave a shocking title to <laughs> make the presentation to the main conference, but apparently, uh, it's still better fit for the uh, Vibram bag. Okay, so first of all, motivation. So I think in Tokyo, I uh, discussed a little bit about uh, storage uh, function virtualization. Basically, we think the trend will be to uh, have uh, traditional storage functions uh, which are provided uh, on the devices at the moment uh, to move it uh, completely virtualized uh, to the software side. And after that session, actually, Aceta uh, comes to me and said, hey, uh, if you could achieve that, uh, then you could actually chain those you know, storage VMs together, right? And I said, right. So uh, like in the Godfather, you know, the chain thing. So, but uh, I, I, we, uh, we discussed and I said that we need to find a good use case uh, to begin with, so why do people want that, right? So let's say there is a user called uh, Peter. Uh, Peter has fully virtualized uh, storage functions. For example, he has a, a Ceph block uh, running in a VM and a, a deduplication and uh, compression uh, also running in the VMs, uh, maybe using ZFS uh, uh, Z volume. So now he wants to have a uh, a, a, a complete uh, sorry service that provides a deduped and compressed Ceph block. So for this purpose, uh, naturally uh, he could just you know chain these uh, storage VMs together, right? But you know how could he actually does it? So if we think about actually the chaining concept uh, coming from the uh, networking side. So in Neutron, uh, at the moment, we have a sub-project called Networking SFC, which uh, is mainly deal, uh, dealing with uh, networking service function chaining. So as you could see, uh, the SFC is responsible uh, to use uh, with switches to chain all these what we call VNFs together uh, to form a uh, NFV service chain. So for storage, how do we chain them? Actually, for the story side, the story is a little bit more complicated. Uh, the, gener uh, the general ideas we have is, for, uh, first of all, utilize as many as current uh, story service as possible. We, don't, we do not want to reinvent or invent you know, many new services just to do this. Um, other ideas would be to borrow the ideas from the networking side, and we would love to try the block storage first. And the challenges uh, are many, as you could imagine. For example, Cinder only recognizes uh, physical arrays at the moment. So it, ha it got to have an uh, external IP he could talk to. But for virtual machines, uh, apparently, it would be a little bit uh, difficult for Cinder to just attach a VM for another VM, right? Another is Cinder does not dynamically uh, add or remove a storage Backhand, so you could uh, you could attach one backhand, but you know dynamically and one and then another and then another. It would be uh, really challenging for Cinder to do. The third one would be networking. Given that if you solve uh, the whole external IP uh, story for the VMs, the networking will uh, if affect the performance uh, really bad. So we start discussion like a community like. Uh, like you see, we started a meetup to discuss the thoughts. So initially, we uh, have around four or five people uh, have th uh, three ideas. First of all, using uh, LVM, LV since LVM actually stores the data. But uh, then you realize that Cinder might not be really part of the story. Uh, another try is using iSCSI. Uh, again, Cinder will not be part of the story. 
Uh, the third one will be to have several lungs uh, uh, on the array for each VM, but it's uh, really complicated. So we need to have a module that actually, uh, like the train coupler, to couple those uh, storage VMs together. So we come down to the path that uh, we think we need to have just only one uh, new module that provides a virtual backend service. So the new module called Coupler actually serves this purpose. Uh, Coupler uh, provides a virtual backend for Cinder. So for Cinder, uh, Coupler will, will seem like an uh, array, but actually Coupler would help Cinder to actually uh, to connect those different storage VMs. So uh, for Coupler, we, we think it should have uh, at least the three main items. Uh, so mapping table provide uh, basically maintaining a table that for each VM uh, it shows uh, what the, ex uh, the floating IP for, for this VM and what is the, the fake IQN actually the coupler allocated for, for this VM so that uh, every time Cinder queries uh, the coupler it could feedback uh, those necessary informations for the next uh, VM in the chain. Okay, the other one is policy consumer. Uh, like in the networking side, coupler need to have a policy uh, uh, coming to coupler to 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 tell him that uh, what are the VMs in the chain. You know uh, what uh, what 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 are the VMs that he need to maintain in the table. And the third one is allocator. Uh, like I said, we need to. Uh, enable each device to know, uh, well, each VMs to know which chain they are actually belonging to. So we could actually just uh, have s uh, allocate fake IQNs to uh, to those VMs. We also need the Cinder plugin. So this is the big picture. Um, the the black one is the actual data path. As you can see, it's very <laughs> super long and. Uh, so for a compute VM, uh, it will uh, attach uh, those uh, storage VMs uh, by using by using coupler, okay, and uh, so each uh, so starting from the first uh, VM actually, uh, Nova will be told from the policy entity that uh, there is a device called coupler is needed uh, to be attached to the VM. So. In this case, it will be like three times uh, the Cinder would attach this coupler device for the VM. But actually, every time coupler gives Cinder the next hop uh, of the VM in the chain. OK, there's a zoom in uh, figure of that scenario. So as you could see, uh, this basically done via the, the coupler driver in the Cinder. So Cinder could uh, actually provide this coupling service uh, uh, for your app. So in this way, we could um, actually chain those what we call storage service VM together. And the networking part is tricky. OK, and uh, there are potential benefits. Uh, uh, for example, you could uh, have multiple chains for multiple scenarios with those VMs. And you could also uh, have different, you know, a acceleration patterns uh, with, with your virtualized uh, storage functions. And the main point is we could uh, finally enable so op for open storage services actually sort of like uh, bootstrap themselves. For example, in Kubernetes, uh, you could have a you know, containerized staff to serve as storage for the other containers, uh, but OpenStack currently can't. Okay, so future plans. Uh, welcome to join the deployment if you think this is a <laughs> valid case. Okay. Also, we, we, will have, we have a spec uh, repo in the GitHub. Welcome to uh, hacking more use cases or requirements. We will looking at file and object uh, later and also standardization uh, opportunities, for example, on the uh, policy side, uh, possible collaboration with Kala. And uh, the policy module, we, we did not touch uh, in this talk, uh, maybe investigate later. And also we try to do a demo possibly by the end of the year. Okay, thank you very much.